So, you want to become a SOC cybersecurity analyst and you don't know what you need to know. Well, I'm here to tell you exactly what you need to know because I'm going to go over exactly what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, six months in, plus I am now far more competent, far more experienced. I'm pretty much an expert, which is why I'm moving on or trying to, to a different position. But before I do that, I wanted to go over the multitude of tickets and also go over one high ticket. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. So you're gonna know exactly what you need to know and exactly what kind of tools you're gonna need to know. So you're not gonna wanna miss this. You're gonna wanna stay till the very end, watch the whole thing in its entirety and you'll be ready for that SOC analyst interview and job. You won't even have to worry about being an imposter because none of us are imposters. We're we're all, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're exactly where we need to be in our life. But yeah, anyways, let's get into it. So the type of tickets and the type of alerts we get. I might've gone over this in a previous video, but I'll go over it again, just in case. We have user submitted Phishing. We have our email filter tickets, which are made up of an AI generated filter that checks and quarantines emails and the alerts trigger when quarantine action cannot be performed for whatever reason. If it can do it all perfectly, then it closes the ticket out and we don't have to worry about it at all. Next, we have a web traffic filter. This is handled kind of by a third party, but it does generate tickets and the tickets usually involve something like the third party notice this type of web traffic usually indicates a botnet. We need to perform some remediation steps. We did, by the way, make sure nothing's broken. I haven't touched these tickets yet. This is kind of like my boss's uh, job pretty much. Funny enough, he told me that when he got here at the company, it was within his first year or whatever, where they dropped a book, the manual for the software and the third party that they use and said, you are now the expert in this. Good luck. And so since then, he's been hitting all of those tickets, all the requests. He's been kind of trying to bring other people into it, but it is a entire, you could specialize in this. Next, we have aforementioned CrowdStrike alerts, which is one very commonly used, which is why I'm hopefully okay disclosing it. I think, I think I'll be all right. One of two EDR types of tickets that we get. The other EDR is a similar, but it's not quite as AI driven. It, it demands more of a, a tuning from our end. And then next we have our same solution tickets, which are mostly network based. And then we have threat intel tickets where we ingest threat intel. We have a threat intel team. They look up for indicators of compromise and phishing campaigns and other type of malware delivery campaigns. It's our job to make sure that the indicators that it does find in our environment, that those indicators are not actually this campaign and somebody didn't get screwed. And yeah, that's pretty much it. For the most part, email filter and user submitted phishing does eat up a lot of my time. But as a part of my promotion that I mentioned in another video, I've been tuning the seam that we use and threat detection rules in there, which has been eating up another large part of my time. So all in all, on a day-to-day -day basis, I do all those tickets, plus I tune the code and all of our threat detection rules. So say I want to find this process, I have to write out the syntax for how the logs are processed and ingested in our seam tool and verify that if this process did occur, that this alert would trigger and flag and then get pushed into our ticketing system to have our security analyst investigate it. So that's it for tickets. So I have gone into detail on the EDR tickets and phishing tickets in another video and a couple other videos actually. But moving on to the high severity alert that I had to pick up the other day. Everybody was on lunch, including me, but I eat lunch at my desk and I just look up ideas for YouTube, please subscribe. And it was a Python script that executed. It was a quote unquote command and control malicious attack on our system. It was on a Linux server. And the hard part about this one is that it was on a department that we have a lot less visibility into. Typically we get service requests that got processed and any changes that happen on a server, we'll be able to look up those changes. In this case, that wasn't the case. So I just had to dig into the process tree surrounding what executed. So first step, when you get a ticket, you wanna look into what exactly happened, what exactly triggered. So I went into the CrowdStrike console, I checked that it was Python script that executed. In this case, the details in the alert itself were super unhelpful. There was a Python script connected to a Python script process and that was it. There was no parent processes. I'm like, okay, great. Thanks, CrowdStrike. So I had to pivot into our other EDR solution, which from there, I opened up a live endpoint process tree, which is a fancy word for a bunch of processes that shows me the parent process that spawned, the Python script, and then every child process below that. It also allows me to check outgoing connections, DNS requests, registry changes, file changes, everything that happens surrounding this process, I can check in all of its surrounding glory. And that is something that you need to be familiar with. You need to be able to go into these tools. You need to be able to check 
where this process is and branch out from there. You need to be able to understand what is malicious and what is not malicious. So you gotta have a baseline understanding. And the baseline is going to take time. So I've learned over the course of the six months here what is kind of normal, what is not. And then also my background, I know how Python works a little bit. So it was calling this requirement that text file, which had all the attributes that were running and being fed into the python.exe, the executable. So I did pull the Python executable to verify that it was a validated version. It was, and then I went into five minutes before the process is spawned and then five minutes after to see were there any weird logins that came up to this happening? Was there any weird activity that followed? The only outgoing connection that it had was to a Python repository uh, URL. It was something something.org. And it is very commonly used by Python uh, people to pull stuff down and, and run it basically. And there were no file changes that were out of the ordinary. The file path itself was very closely matched to the naming convention on this server, there were about 200 other files in this folder that all ran these scripts from child folders. And given how closely matched there was a name, and then also the smoking bun, <laughs> bun, smoking gun, was that the full process breakdown showed apartment specific files in GitLab that only somebody who worked for the company and worked for that department would be pulling from. Typically a bad actor would do some weird shady shit and they would be pulling from like some random repo somewhere that you've never heard of or some random IP address or if it is a repo that is commonly used it would have some weird obscure name it wouldn't have the naming conventions as this company so long story short all the artifacts that occurred everything that I looked at pointed to this being benign and I did have to confirm with a senior analyst who said that this is standard Python behavior for this server, for this department, because my baseline was a little bit shaky on that department, because like I said before, we don't have a ton of visibility into their service requests, because this is a server, it's a Linux server, you gotta take that a little bit more serious, which is probably why this was a high alert to begin with. If this happened on a computer, it probably be medium severity. It was not command and control. Whew. So, Mad Hat, is not fired. But yeah, that was the high severity alert. If you have any questions about the processes that I go about figuring out what is benign and what is malicious, I'm happy to answer down below. Just kind of wanted to go over another ticket, go over the types of tickets we get to give you kind of an understanding of what you need to learn. And maybe if there's something you don't quite know about, then I can make a video about it. Or you could research on your own and become an expert in it. But yeah, that's currently my day-to-day -day now, six months into the job. I'm still waiting to hear back on my Road to 100K updates to provide some wonderful live and organic content. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if anything was helpful at all in the video, please consider liking as well and commenting because that pushes that glorious YouTube algorithm, which is not very mean. It's not a, it's not a nice algorithm. It doesn't like me. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next video.